moldy. The Transformers have been an incredibly successful toy line. There are lots of reasons why the brand has been so popular. There are movies and TV shows, comic books, catchy advertising, surprisingly deep and engaging lore for fans to explore, and they are a product of the 80s. I would argue that the biggest reason for their success, their most compelling feature, is also the most self-evident. It's in the name. They transform. Even as the brand has reinvented itself a number of times, this integral feature of the brand has remained the same. That Transformers transform is also their most compelling feature for me. It's why I've continued to design and 3D print them for the last five years, despite how busy I've been. I've covered my design process a little bit before in my video on the transforming wind blade I did, and it's safe to say that transformation is the main focus of every step in that process. I don't even begin to work on a transformer unless I have a general idea of how it will transform and I don't stop printing prototypes until I'm sure that it can and that it's mostly stable in both robot and vehicle modes. Transformers are their own little puzzles and given how much time and energy it takes me to design one, I can only imagine the engineering skills that go into designing them for mass production with much higher part counts the way Hasbro and Takara do it. In the same way that my process for designing 3D printed transformers engages me, I also find their process fascinating. Mass producing their products for general retail means that they have to take way more things into consideration. Release schedules, material properties, manufacturing processes, making new molds. They don't have the convenience of printing something slowly, but on demand, on a 3D printer that can make all of the different components. Everything must be accounted for and everything has a cost. Cutting costs mostly in non-intrusive ways, is so important to them that it has even become one of the most enduring parts of the brand, present since the very beginning of the franchise. One of the most expensive parts of producing a transformer is making a new mold for all of its parts. To squeeze the most value from a mold, some genius had the idea that you can make different transformers from the same mold. This leads to big savings for Hasbro and Takara and a greater selection of toys and characters for the Transformers brand. It's a win-win and it's been a staple of the franchise since the beginning. There are so many ways to cleverly get more from a mold, from retools or remolds, redecos, gang molding, and reissues, but for the sake of this video, I won't get too technical. Starscream and the Seekers, Optimus and Nemesis Prime, Soundwave and Soundblaster, and, most importantly to me, Ratchet and Ironhide are all products of clever mold reuse. This means that they share a body type. If I design one, then I've basically designed the other. Unlike Hasbro and Takara, my most valuable resource is time, not expensive molds, but I still benefit from their shared body type by saving valuable design time. Luckily for me, this project wasn't just a BOGO deal, but this was a buy one get two deal, since I've already designed a van transformer, Combitron. I started there and then worked on adapting the Volkswagen Combi into a Nissan Vanette, reworking the robot mode and making some slight adaptations to the transformation including compliant locking joints for better stability and retracting side skirts to clean up the robot mode. I also designed some sweet weapons. For Ratchet, an arm blaster reminiscent of his G1 appearance. For Ironhide, a sweet drum mag fed grenade launcher. The blasters stow in the back for both Ratchet and Ironhide. And for Ironhide, the drum magazine transforms into a spare tire for vehicle mode. And yes, they are 5mm compatible. Accessories that integrate into transformation are a pet feature of mine, and I'm very excited how these turned out. Finally, a surprise. I've said before that I won't paint my transformers. However, I've seen, 
thanks to others that have posted their makes, that they do look really, really good. I mean, check these out. So, I found a loophole. This is Autobot Mystery Machine, the iconic vehicle for the Mystery Incorporated gang, painted not by me, but by my lovely wife, Ior1. Now, on to the beauty shots. If you've made it this far, thanks for watching. I have been very excited to show these new 3D printed transformers to you, and I know that they've been a long time coming. I still plan to continue making them, and I have already begun work on some highly requested bots as my next project. Just maybe don't expect them anytime too soon. Until then, take care.